the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Packers and the Broncos. And it's coming up next on Madden NFL 24. We find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Today, we've got a matchup here in Pivotal Week 7, as it'll be the Green Bay Packers taking on the Denver Broncos. And hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at this Bronco team. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. Meanwhile, for the visiting Packers, they come in pretty desperate here for a win as they've started the year. Getting toward the halfway point of the end season week seven is underway on EA Sports taken at the goal line and he'll be tackled just shy of the 25 so here comes the Packers offense now onto the field and they're led out by their mobile quarterback out of West Virginia it's Geno Smith and coming up of an early season open week and in this situation what he told us when we sat down with him was he spent a lot of time working on fundamentals, kind of getting back to basics during that time, as opposed to having to worry about healing up or resting up. It's too early in the season. Get back to the basics, get his game going again. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And Charles, you, you wonder about this defense coming in. I mean, look, it's no secret they're playing a team that's down on its luck right now. Losers of five straight. How does that change how you prepare for a game? Well, to me, the first thought is you just get after them early, right? Take away any chance of them building any confidence. But the second thing is you prepare a little bit differently. You've got to expect this team to take chances, go for it on third and fourth downs, run a lot of trick plays, anything to try and break their losing streak. So you must stay alert and stay aware. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. Fair catch, signal four, and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So now here are the Broncos for their first drive of the game. They'll be led out by someone who has proved doubters wrong his entire career. MVP runner-up a season ago, Jalen Hurts. And there was a positive in last week's loss. No interceptions thrown by him. But he only threw one touchdown pass, and you know he wants that to improve. He might even consider that as part of the reason that they couldn't take the win last time out. I believe we'll see a more aggressive version of him this week whenever they're nearing the end zone. From the 38 now, here's second down and one. They go play action with Hurts. He'll drop this one off with ETU. He'll be out of the after getting this one across the field. But first down, Hurts. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Hurts throw caught by Alonso. And he's going to get this inside the 30. They'll run for the first time with Travis Etienne. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Now a second and ten. Another toe for Etienne. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. 
An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. Hurts. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Uh, that's a sharp throw right there on third down. They're looking to get the first points of the game, and they certainly don't want to be on a field goal. So that's a nice job to get the hookup and set up a first and goal. Matt LaFleur loudly voicing his objections to that previous call. He's going to throw out the red challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. That's Alave bringing in another one. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Back to the ground with ETN. He gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. We pause for an injury here. It looks like it's yeah, it's Keenan Allen who's in some pain down there. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Hurts. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Green Bay up to the task there in coverage and forcing a fourth down. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. And the now 40 year old veteran able to put this one through. So Ron Glad gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they set up for just the field goal. I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer. That would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. And they, of course, coming into this one in the midst of a tough losing streak. They did get helped out by the open week last week, and in talking with him, all indications were, Charles, that that was a very helpful break. Yeah, I know a lot of teams, coaches, they hate taking time off in the midst of a losing streak because they think they have to stay on their toes and punch their way out of it. But occasionally, you get that open week, you step back, evaluate what's been going wrong, see what you can put in that can move you forward, and maybe you get a chance to breathe a little bit and kind of start over. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming out. Inserts your four yards here to pick up the first down. Smith. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's out of bounds. Able to take this one up to the 35. First time these two have hooked up this afternoon, and it's a first down. And he'll go right back to Moore. Complete again. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Just need a yard here. Second and one. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. And that's out to the flat for Swift. Two yards on the pickup, but that's all they needed to move the sticks. Again, Smith. the ball away and it falls incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first down third. Now Smith. And he is caught. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 37. A nice pickup of 17 yards. 
That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 37-yard line. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. George Pickens, the intended target, and it's second down. When you look at this Bronco defense, they come into this one ranked number five in the NFL against the run. Now if they could just get their pass defense in line, this unit would be really, really strong. And remember the conversation with the defensive coordinator? He wants him to rush the passer better. He wants to see the quarterback on the ground. They've got to create some sacks. And he said it starts early and often. We'll see if they can get to him. On first and ten, Smith. Finding Otten once more. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. This second and four. Swift going to try up the middle. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive. And not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. And it's a very, very difficult for him in that situation. This will wind up a loss on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Now Harrison Bunker for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. Bunker's kick here is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. You sound like you're going negative on that. I was. I was. It sounds like, it sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches are going to do short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. And he's going to have a Broncos first down as he's able to take this up to the 30-yard line. Second quarter about to begin from Denver. It's the Broncos in possession of the football. So first and 10 now from the 30. As they've got it as we resume action. The throw over the middle taken in. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give them 14 yards there and a Denver first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. They'll go again to Jones. And this will be taken across midfield and into Green Bay territory. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. Here's Hurts to throw. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. And last week in the loss, five punts as he gets this one away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. 
they'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. They want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Now second and seven from the 23. They'll run the draw here with Swift. And he'll get about three up past the 25. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Now Gino. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And Smith's throw here into the hands of Moore. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Second down and a yard. Play action. It's Smith. He's got this to Pickens. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 41-yard line. Give him 15 there. The Packers have a first. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Geno down to throw. Finding Pickens for another catch. It'll go as a gain of four. And it'll be second down. It's now second and six. Smith throwing again. A quick throw there is incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Throwing on third down, Smith. Throw left side is complete on the diving effort. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 15-yard line. A gain of 22. Hey, did you have one of those backyards that you had one of those, like, mats or pits like you have for high jumpers? And, you know, you had your friends throw the ball and you tried to make the spectacular catches? I didn't need a mat. <laughs> you, you just did it with the ground? Absolutely. That explains your Concrete. toughness. That <laughs> explains your toughness right there because... I think that guy was raised just like you. What a catch. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. So not quite a first and goal just yet as they come up now second and inches. Throwing again is Smith. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. A kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're hoping to change that right here. And they'll turn their power game to try to get in. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Green Bay touchdown. It's the fullback with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Packers have taken the lead. Well, they weren't messing around. First and goal, they don't do anything fancy. They just go to the fullback right away. I like how you phrase that because oftentimes they come back to the fullback when it's late in the down and distance count, right? In this case, first down, let's go get it right now. And he got it six points on the board. Extra point by Butker is on target, and the lead is now 10-3. to three. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. No run back here for Jones, a touchback. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. Just a lone field goal for them so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. Hurts sets up to throw it for Keenan Allen. That's complete. He'll be dropped after a game of about six across the 30 to the 31. We pause for an injury here. It looks like it's yeah, it's Keenan Allen who's in some pain down there. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Throwing his hurts. This one swung out here to Jones. 
And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down. Back to throw here. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. The Broncos at two and four here in the first half of the year. And they come in losers of two straight, so trying to turn things around here. And you just mentioned two straight, and when you're talking about two games, that's nothing to... There he goes, right side! And he will go out right near the 35-yard line. 44 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? We just saw down that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. And a result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Down to the 25. They could muster only a yard there, and they'll be left with a third and very short. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Nine yards that time. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Week seven action, and we've got a seven-point game here in the second quarter. And this offense hoping to change that right here. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. They'll give him four yards there, and that's going to bring up second down. Hurts. Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Well, the Broncos are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here. That pickup ensures the drive continues. And now do you continue the drive which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now. But you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Jones will get down close to the goal line, but not in as he'll be marked down at the one. Second and goal from the one. They'll send one of those two tight ends in motion. ETN looking for a signal, but none forthcoming. They stopped him shy of the goal line. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Chris Olave as the first half is winding down. And the Broncos have a chance to tie the game here in the final seconds of the half. I don't think it's any state secret to know what they were saying before the start of this drive. Let's go and punch one in the end zone and go into the halftime feeling a heck of a lot better about ourselves. Let's go get this done. Yeah, tie things up and then you get a brand new ball game. Gold with the extra point. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. About set to get this drive started. The Green Bay offense at the line. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. 
They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. And that's the knowledge of game from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. down to the 35-yard line. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a tie ball game here heading to break. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. A lot to get to here as some of the division races starting to take shape as we look around the NFL here in week number seven. On Monday Night Football, our friend Alan Roach can't wait for this one. The Niners and Vikings from Minnesota at 8.15 Eastern Time. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. And this will come out to the 25 as Jones elects for the touchback. For the Broncos offense set to begin this third quarter. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Here now, third and a yard. They go play action with Hertz. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have the Broncos first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Straight ahead, ETN. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. And that throw behind his man, he missed him incomplete. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. Got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have the Broncos first down, and he's going to have it by plenty. Able to get eight yards there on third and two. As you know, so many things in the passing game are based on yardage. Sometimes it's just based on timing, and that's what we saw right there on that play. Third and three, just get the ball right to the receiver. Is the hitch route. And tell us, what is the hitch route? Yeah, just take really one step, like you're driving off the line of scrimmage, get the defensive back on his heels, get the ball out to the receiver, and he does the rest. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive. But a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Partner just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage. But he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. And he will have the Broncos first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, 
I guess the point is move. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. So give him two yards there on the completion, and it's second down. He'll look to throw. Throws the out route. It's Beasley with a catch. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They'll come up now, third and three. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And they will touch him down the night before he gets the first. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. And that could be one of those turning point plays in a ball game. A field goal gets you the lead here, but they want to make a statement and get six points. And they're certainly going to get that opportunity as they get the conversion and set up first and goal. And they'll run with ETN. And he'll get about four there as he takes it from the 10 down to the six. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yeah, it's now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try to put it in that way. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. They call it a loss of a yard there. And now we've got a third and goal situation. Here's Hurts to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, so a drive that spans all that time, and yet you may only come away with three points here. Well, your defense, all right, they actually like these long drives. They get to rest over on the sidelines for a while. But when you're not finishing with points in terms of touchdowns, that's frustrating. They've got to figure out how to close out these long drives and get sixes instead of threes. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx him. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. the ground and Swift to start the drive and he can only manage to get a couple second and eight coming up well any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly and that was because the defensive front they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage they used great leverage held their spot and stacked him up and he's able to plow forward up to about the 29 just shy of the 30. third down and one Smith and unable to connect if he had caught it it would have been a first down instead it's forward we're into the second half now this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive looks like they're just totally out of sync whether they're running the ball passing the ball like we saw there I don't know the rhythm seems off the call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Broncos take over. First down and 10. They'll throw on first down with Hurts, and it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game. Second and ten. He'll drop to throw. Oh, it's fumbles it. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And good field position coming up here. The football at the 12-yard line. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does, and I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame, and any time he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. At the seven yard line. It'll be a gain of five. And that will bring up second down. Brings up second and five at the six yard line. Throwing now is Gino. 
Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half. Incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target in the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. And he's brought down short by a yard. It's a third down game of four. A short game that doesn't get him the first down. Brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before. Butker's kick here is good. And that's going to tie us at 13. So the fumble recovery had them set up in ideal field position, but they can muster only three points out of it. Yeah, when you're able to force turnovers, especially when it results in field position like they had, you really want to make it hurt. Here, they take the field goal. That's definitely not what they were hoping for. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though? When they... He's got a man complete. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Now about a 39-yard pickup. They'll take it. When you get into the second half of a tie ball game, you start realizing that every play takes on a bigger significance, and this is pretty significant right here. This is where you start putting the pressure on that secondary, and that's a job well done there. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Back to throw. That one complete downfield to Kirk. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. That one good for 37 yards. I think this defense is still trying to recover from that last play, so you wonder if they were ready for this one. You have to imagine their defensive coaches are yelling at them to get focus, because if they don't, more plays like that will result in giving up points. Now Jones. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. On second down, a run with ETN. The second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. Only a yard there, so it brings up fourth and goal. Robbie Gold on now to try the field goal. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. So with a fourth and goal looming, we hit the end of three quarters of play. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. The kick by goal is good, and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long way from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Packers ready to take over offensively. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. A solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Well, definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. He'll be blocked down by the Broncos. It's a sack. 
finally held down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop her. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Well, they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And yeah, nothing doing here is this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. The Packers on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This will be third and a mile. From the gun, here's Smith. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. A 40-yard punt, no return, and they will take over first and 10. So here are the Broncos to take over on offense. They lost two straight coming in, but good news for them right now. They've got the lead and the football. On first and 10, it's Hurts. He'll drop this one off with ETN, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Just a gain of a couple there. And that'll make it second down. They'll look to throw here. Slant pass could bring to Arado. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game at Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. From the 41, here's a second and five. A give to ETN running right. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. They need two. Here's third down. Hurt sets up to throw it. He hits Beasley right side. And he will have the Broncos first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. The Brandon from our time in college football where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree. One thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. I think we just saw that there. Well, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Throwing his hurts. This is caught. It's Kirk. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Caught at a very strong gain of 24. These guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing him. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll try the left side with ETN. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. They'll set up the throw. And look at this. They get the turnover they need, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jerome Baker. And the Packers are right back in this football game. A seismic shift in momentum here in the fourth quarter. That's the break that the defense needed. And you know as well as I do, people are going to question the play call in that situation. Sometimes you have to question the execution, not necessarily the call. And in this case, those defenders found a way to give their team a chance. The Green Bay offense ready to take over. A golden opportunity for them now following the interception. They need to try to at least get three. Obviously, a touchdown puts them in a much more secure position. Smith's throw taken in by Slayton. 
And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. They run out of the gun with Swift. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there's a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. He'll fire deep looking for more. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. That was for the lead right there. They know they're in a position where fortune favors the brain. So they took their shot but couldn't connect. Now Gino. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. And the other day they told us, we've got third and five or less. We have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And that will cut the offense as they take over. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Right side, it's Manhurts, the tight end. Two yards on the pickup there. And it's second down. Hurts. Alave over the middle. So five yards here, five on the play. And now it's third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. On first down, right back to ETN. And a solid run down inside the 30. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And he is going to have the Broncos first, and that should be the capper. And they take a knee. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. ETN up the middle. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. Down to a knee goes Hurts, and that is going to be that. And that knee will do it. So they snap the losing streak. Always a good feeling. Yeah, I don't know if this one right here when they're taking a knee is as much exultation as exhalation, right? They just breathe a sigh of relief. Finally got a win, needed one desperately. So this one will wind up a Denver victory, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So for the Broncos, they fall a game under 500 now at three up and four down. And they'll get to stay home again next week.
Meanwhile, for the Packers, the downward spiral continues as they drop to 0-6 now. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon God. Next game, guess what? Charles and I will be here again. It's the NFL on EA Sports.